and welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, it's now time for us to share a couple of things that commemorate, uh, or rather, are very significant with the date November 10th. Uh, there's so much where we're going to be bringing in, but let's start with the Great Wall of China. We're talking uh, about this this morning because it was opened as a tourist destination on the 10th of November, uh, 1970. Uh, the Great Wall was built in parts to stop invading nomadic groups from the northern borders of China and the Eurasian steep. It was built by China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang. Uh, the original length of the Great Wall is around 21,200 kilometers. And uh, of course, uh, the only remaining relics can be found in the part built by the Ming Dynasty that stretches for a little above 6,000 kilometers. It's about 25 uh, feet tall and is, uh, of course, one of the uh, great wonders of the earth. If you go on your internet and search, and maybe that's also one of the things that is relevant today, World Day, Day of uh, Science and uh, Development, the internet and how powerful it is. You can see a lot more on the Great Wall of China. Yeah, yes, indeed. Uh, something that's uh, also intriguing is one of the longest and largest man-made construction in the world. A lot of um, thinking must have gone into what, how to go about it. And the materials used is interesting. Um, yes how that played out. And then talking about the uh, conversation about um, if you can see um, the Great Wall from outer space. Okay, so um, this is uh, very funny because it came from uh, Robert Ripley, uh, the American illustrator who made a fortune uh, with a cartoon uh, that um, is titled Believe It or not. And that was some 30 years uh, before this was debunked because there was no scientific evidence to actually show uh, that you can see the Great Wall of China uh, from the moon. So for, the, from, <laughs> for those that think that you can, you cannot. It's not possible. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not possible to see uh, the Great Wall of China yes. from uh, space. So, those pictures. Something that I would also mention is um, this, you know, was built as early as the 7th century BC. Um, and it, it makes you wonder what type of technology was available back then. We're talking today about the thinking world. that instigated yes. this kind We're of. We're talking today about the World Day of Science and Development, you know, and it makes you, of course, focus a lot on um, how much science has been able to improve the earth and improve, you know, our, our ways of living and where we are today generally. But think about what type of technology was available in the seventh century. They, they've um, including... always been very innovative as a people. Uh, the, the Chinese seem to be setting the pace when it comes to all kinds of, you know, innovation. Yes. Um, to protect yourself, you thought of this. Uh, aside from that, I think there were other reasons uh, for the wall as the years went by. Um, border control, um, protection mostly. I think those, those were the two major reasons uh, the wall was built in now, the first place. Now it's now a tourist attraction. Yes. People go to go and look at it and you know wonder at you know the thinking behind uh, that move. And, and, and a little further with that, uh, talking about it being a tourist attraction, the Great Wall of China attracts about 10 million people annually. Mm -hmm. um, as a tourist attraction. It's been closed for a bit because of, uh, of course, COVID-19. But 10 million people annually um, is something that a, a country wouldn't want to let go of. And I'm talking, I'm focusing on that because there's also another very fascinating man-made structures, one of the greatest and biggest and largest man-made structures um, in the world. And it, um, the Great Wall of China is what, 21,000 kilometers? Mm -hmm. This one I'm talking about is about 16,000 kilometers. And it is the um, walls of Benin. Um, in Edo State, <laughs> you right there. I had to bring it up <laughs> because there, there's been an argument about which really is the largest Large. man-made structure. Is it the Great Wall of China or is it the Benin Moat, uh, the Benin Walls? Um, I, I, for I a long think, time, I don't think there's any scientific back into the uh, argument, really, because what we have with the uh, Great Wall of China is a lot of persons. They, they, you see the expanse that is given, the landmass that was covered, and then yes. you think of the Benin. Uh, you, you should know a lot better. So, so. That's why there is that argument, uh, because a lot of it also was destroyed when uh, the Europeans invaded Benin uh, very, very long ago. And so, you know, there's now some argument about what, what part of it is left if the measurements that we're talking about today are only the parts that are left, or there was a lot more that um, was, you know, built by the um, um, Benin people back then. But something that 
you know, I would also mention is the fact that the Great Wall of China attracts 10 million people every year as a tourist um, um, destination. But in Benin City, I don't remember anybody ever visiting Benin to see the Benin Moat or see the great walls of Benin City. And, and that, so that's because we don't, um, we don't have exactly. that guy. You will think about the money you spend to pay to get access. Whereas in other climes, these are the things that sell. People get up. I know I did. I get up, get dressed, and you just want to go and see the ruins of castles, for instance. You well, want to see um, what is the history of this place. And then people take you on tour through tunnels. And you, know, you feel this sense of history. You imagine the people living at this time. You imagine the people that labored together. There were, there were allegations that uh, laborers died and were buried in the wall, uh, but there is no evidence to prove that that actually happened. But, you know, it allows your imagination to run wild and you... It, I don't know why people it's, don't it's a reminder. explore it it's in a, this part of the world. It's, 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 it's a reminder to us. It's not, it's not just this part of the world. In Nigeria, mostly. We, we've exactly. done very poorly with tourism. We've done very poorly with with uh, maintaining certain parts and artifacts in our history. Um, and that's why these things, I mean, history generally, we've done very poorly. Yeah, with, well, well I, we, we should give kudos where we do have them. Um, in Abia State, for instance, um, before I went there for work, I, I, I used to hear about Ojuku Bonka. I used to hear about some other, um, you know, interesting, lot, amazingly, I lived just a block away from the Ojuku Bonka for um, over two years. And then one day I was like, can't I go there and see? And I went and I went through. It's an interest. People should learn to, and our government should find a way to explore our tourist attack, um, attraction to the maximum, uh, really. Once again, we've done very poorly with it. Because I've also been to the, uh, <laughs> the coal mines in Enugu well, State. I, always, I, 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 I stayed in Enugu long enough. What we, uh, yes, I know and we I, can I, I went to. Yeah, I know we can be better. But it doesn't, yes, it doesn't stop, it us, doesn't stop us from... That's the reason we are having this conversation. So when we, when we bring the issues to the fore, we allow people to allow their minds to explore the possibilities of finding solutions to the problem. Because uh, we can't afford to be as pessimistic as, you know... It's not being pessimistic <laughs> say saying that we've done poorly. I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm pessimistic is saying that we would never. I'm, I'm saying we've done poorly. We've done very, very poorly. I, I took myself to... Uh, the Ohum Monastery and Waterfalls in Enugu State. I took myself to the coal mines along with a couple of friends just to see what it was like. And it's a total mess. There is barely anything that is left of the, of the coal mines in Enugu State. Right. And but the same thing with, with the, many others. Yeah, before we move to the Marine Corps, I might just today uh, mention the fact that on this day in 2001, uh, China became, the, the approval to become part of the World Trade Organization uh, was made by the uh, ministry. The China Parliament, rather, after ratification from the China Parliament. I should just um, read what I have here. Uh, the after 15 years of negotiation, uh, China's membership in the World Trade Organization was approved uh, by the WTO Ministerial Conference. And the following day, Taiwan's membership was also approved. China became a member of the WTO um, on December 11, 2001. But it was on this day in history, um, in 2001, that they, their approval to become a part of that great body uh, was made. So we'll move on now to... Hello. The Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.